Um, plan, planning applications committee report number two, Councillor Cuff. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I'm very pleased to formally move uh, this paragraph tonight. Um, if you took a stroll down Garrett Lane today, um, you would have been greeted by uh, boards, builders and demolition. Uh, and if you decided to walk up Buckhold Road, you would have seen uh, cranes and concrete frames <coughs> uh, coming up. And if you wandered into Southside, you'd be aware of the, the new retail, uh, the new new lock, uh, the Costa, and um, the TK Maxx, which has uh, taken residence. And if you're a small business in Wandsworth, uh, you'll be aware that in 2013, uh, you'll be able to benefit from a new business centre in Wandsworth Town, uh, offering 80,000 square foot of space. If you're a local student, you can benefit from the £70 million South Thames College. And if you're at Wandsworth Town Station, you can benefit from an upgraded station facility. There's new shops, there's new jobs, there's new business space, there's new homes. I think it would be fair to say, in its own way, Wandsworth Town is going through its own quiet revolution. And that's why I'm very pleased to uh, forward this debate for discussion tonight. Councillor Carpenter. Madam Mayor, may I take this opportunity of congratulating you on the way you've discharged your civic responsibilities over the past year, and particularly for your unstinting efforts in raising funds for your chosen charities of Age Concern and St George's. I think everyone in this chamber welcomes the prospect of the long-awaited completion of the refurbishment of the South Side Shopping Centre. The only issues raised at the Planning Applications Committee were the retention of the three plane trees on the Wandsworth High Street frontage and the proposed sculpture for the front of the development. I trust that council officers can satisfactorily resolve these outstanding matters in the course of their Section 106 negotiations with the developers. The proposed refurbishment is, as members may be aware, somewhat less extensive than was originally intended by the developers. And the timing of the planning application means that there will be no benefit to either the Mayor of London or Wandsworth from the community infrastructure levy. Nor are there any significant Section 106 planning gains from this refurbishment. This contrasts poorly with the planning gain from the original Arndale development, which helped fund the development of the social housing on the site. The developers are, of course, claiming poverty. That is not surprising, given the recession that uh, the misguided economic policies of the Tory Chancellor of the Exchequer have plunged the country into. But the result is that this redevelopment will bring little tangible benefit to the citizens of Wandsworth beyond an improved shopping experience. Why are we not seeing any greater benefits for the Wandsworth residents we serve? I would argue that this is not because of a short-term economic downturn, but a long-term lack of a strategic vision shown by Wandsworth Council in its planning policies. Rather than having a clear master plan for Wandsworth Town Centre, the Council carves it up into individual unrelated sites, so that the development across the road at the Ram Brewery site is planned in isolation from the Southside Shopping Centre. And we have seen where this failure to articulate a clear strategy leads us to planning appeals and delay and the consequent loss of millions in council tax revenue to the council. Nowhere is this incompetent blundering clearer than in the Battersea Power Station site. Our flagship Tory council has spent no less than 30 years in failing to secure the redevelopment of the site. Scheme after scheme has collapsed into administration. And the result has been the loss of hundreds of millions of pounds in council tax to Wandsworth. So much for Tory financial probity. I trust that now that there are new plans being developed for the site, the council will not seek to intervene to favour one developer over another. Turning to the wider Battersea Nine Elms development area, the council has been so concerned to generate funds for its pet infrastructure projects that it has entirely overlooked the fundamental requirements of sustainable development. How can anyone describe a community in which only 15% of its housing is affordable 
as a sustainable community. Sustainable for the 1% of millionaires, but not for the 99% of ordinary Wandsworth residents. In my own part of the borough, Putney, the council has failed to come up with any coherent plan for the development of Putney Town Centre, whose retail offering is generally subscale. Again, preferring the piecemeal development of a hodgepodge of sites across the town centre. I have been arguing for many years, long before I joined this council, for the inclusion of Putney Bus Station in the site-specific allocations document. This is the last major commercial site in Putney Town Centre available for redevelopment. But I have been rebuffed at every turn by the planners, who simply say, London Transport have no plans to move the bus garage. What an abdication of responsibility. In the local development framework, we are meant to be devising a master plan for the next 15 years, yet we allow London Transport to call the tune. Not only would development of the Putney bus garage go a long way to addressing the problem of subscale retail units in Putney Town Centre, it would considerably alleviate the pollution problems in Putney High Street, which are exacerbated by the bus garage. Under the Localism Act, provision is made for the development of neighbourhood plans. And I welcome the moves by the Putney Society and other local amenity groups to develop a neighbourhood plan for Putney Town Centre. I hope that the Council and the Putney Town Centre Partnership Board will embrace this initiative. Neighbourhood plans may also be a useful way forward in developing plans for the regeneration of Latchmere and Roehampton. But these need to be long-term strategic master plans, not a collection of individual development initiatives. If we are to move forward with a vision of a better tomorrow, rather than the better yesterday, which is currently on offer from the Tory party opposite. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carpenter, and thank you for your support. Councillor Tom. That's to do with the charities, by the way, <laughs> not political. <laughs> I can't tell. Uh, Madam Mayor, I remember the last time we talked about development, uh, Councillor Belton observed that it was very unlikely you'd see anything happening with regard to Battersea Power Station or the Wandsworth one-way system in his lifetime. Well, um, no, you did say that. I remember that. It was rather vivid. <laughs> Well, I don't propose to talk about the power station, but I think it's time perhaps to say a few words about the Young's Heritage Site, which I think I'm more optimistic about, and I think is another proposition. As a ward councillor, I sat through the last public inquiry, I think about three years ago, when we went through all the issues about uh, the site, and you may remember, eventually it was all scuppered because of the... Uh, reservations by the health and safety executive uh, with regard to the gas holder, the one in 100,000 risk that it might blow up. And that's something I think we want to avoid uh, as an issue for the future. Minerva therefore went back to the drawing board. It produced new plans. It took away the two towers and put in one tower. And it also redesigned the system and improved it. And so all that looked good. Then, of course, in August last year, the company was taken over by Delancey. And Delancey are a major, well-funded property group. You may know their name. They are uh, chaired by one Jamie Rittblatt, who is the son of Sir John Rittblatt, a very distinguished and well-known commercial developer over the years. Delancey, therefore, are in a position to take the project forward. And also, equally relevantly, they're owners of Southside. So I spoke to Delancey just a couple of days ago to ask them what their intentions were with regard to the Ram Brewery site. So the three things. First of all, they're going to draw up proposals over the next three or four weeks, which they will put to their main board. And once the management team get the agreement to proceed, they will come back to Wandsworth and talk to the planners and talk indeed to local councillors to find our views about the issues. And then finally, they will submit a planning application which will go in either in late summer or early autumn. Of course, from our side, we want to see some planning gain. And certainly, we would expect to see a major contribution towards the, what, changing the one-way system in Wandsworth. We, I hope, too, personally speaking, 
that they will maintain the commitment made by Minerva for community space to be made available for the Wandsworth Museum and the brewery itself. And of course, also to ensure that the tower, the main tower block, which is likely to remain because they're retaining the same architects for the project, will be the other side of the Wandle on the very corner of the site. Of course, decommissioning of the uh, gas holders themselves is another major issue, and hopefully discussions can carry on on a parallel basis with that, because that's something we need to resolve about the same time. So I would say, Madam, there, this. It's very clear that Delancey are extremely positive in terms of developing the Ram Brewery site. No question about that. And of course, there's much greater complementarity with the very fact that they own the uh, south, south side and, of course, the Ram Brewery site. So that will be very beneficial in retail terms. So what I think we will see is a very successful residential and commercial outcome here in the very heart of Wandsworth. And I think that's very much worthy of our support. Thank you, Councillor Tom. Councillor Belton. Madam Mayor, um, as you know and other people know, my speeches are always superbly crafted, logically consistent, and uh, are well written and prepared. Uh, on this occasion, I'm mildly caught out because they're none of those, and I've got a real logical inconsistency in it as well, which I'm sure others will be the first to point out. But it's something I thought I'd uh, come clean with uh, for everyone so they can all take in my problem. Uh, Councillor Tom has spoken uh, perfectly well about various odd things, the Plumsfield explosion and the impact on here on the gasometers um, and the planning commitments concerned about the one-way system, about uh, uh, Councillor Carpenter mentioned the question of affordability, uh, affordable houses that are truly affordable rather than in the government's weird definition of affordability. And there are lots of other issues. Um, for instance, in the area we're talking about, there were a thousand industrial jobs um, 10 years ago, no, may, rather more than 10 years ago, um, there's now about 150. Uh, so what are the jobs for other people? There's quite a few things. But let me come clean on my uh, inconsistency. Um, I've been saying that uh, there's going to be a double dip recession uh, for quite a long time and been shouted down, uh, not least by the terrible tree I was talking about before. Uh, two of them not here, very annoying. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I've been shouted down. By, now, now we're going for a tri triple dip or a quadruple dip recession. I think economists are going to have to invent new words um, or new descriptions. Uh, and yet this majority party, I thought the only person smooth enough to try and uh, justify the position was in fact Councillor Maxwell Scott. I didn't think anyone else would have the nerve. But tonight in answer to question one, uh, whole bevies of Tory party were still maintaining the myth that the Labour government was responsible for Greece dropping out the Euro, the world financial crisis, record unemployment in Spain. I mean, you name it, Gordon was responsible for it. And no one, not even according to recent opinion polls, not even the majority of Tory party members believe it anymore. So you're going to have to wake up, Wandsworth, and just get vaguely with it. Um, and recognise and recognise something else. I truly believe, because uh, yeah, I've, I've made these predictions, I'm making that one. I'm now going to make another prediction. Sorry, am I? I'm now going to make another prediction that that this won't hold. It won't hold because it's not sustainable, and it won't actually happen. And I've been around long enough. I'm sorry to say, to see. A year or two after Ted Heath came in with the same kind of stuff, not a different level, not quite as severe, the barber boom. And the barber boom just where every money was thrown at local government, was thrown at everything to try and get the economy working. And after the first two or three years of Margaret Thatcher, exactly the same happened. Exactly the same. At the time, I had some vague responsibility for the computer section in the GLC. And it was February the 28th, and we were having a management meeting. And the boss came in and said, 
We've just been told we've got to spend a million pounds by the end of the financial year. You know, four weeks. That's what we've got to spend, a million pounds. This is just one small part of the GOC. Thank goodness the PC had just come out, and we just went out and ordered a thousand PCs. We had no idea what we were going to do with these darn things, but we just went out and, uh, and, and bought them. Um, this, that's going to happen this time. Don't, don't believe what you, what you claim. Don't believe it. The government will be dead, and you know it, and they know it, if this economic situation doesn't change. And something will happen. It may be Greece withdrawing from the euro, uh, followed by Portugal and maybe Ireland. Who knows? But this government will be forced to U-turn. And when it does, then possibly the regeneration of a Wandsworth, uh, Wandsworth Town Hall might come alive. Oh, sorry, Madam May I go? Oh, it's another 30 seconds. It might come alive. Perhaps you might mention the Southside Shopping Centre before you finish. I, well, I am. I'm getting there. <laughs> if the economy gets going, maybe Councillor Cuff and, and Co. have a chance. But I just wanted to, wanted to highlight one thing, actually. There are so many issues, if, or you name it. But with our economy going the way our economy is going in world financial terms, but also the systemic change in it and the way that we all do more internet shopping, the way that we all don't go shopping as much, some of us not at all, thank goodness. How much longer are we going to be dependent, uh, depending on the retail trade to get our town centres going and operating? Can I just suggest, Madam Mayor, that the planning and the strategic planning people need to think really high, hard about the, the parent plans to build another town centre in Nine Elms and increase the size of it everywhere else. But some point or other, this is a systemic change which we're going to have to take on board. Thank you, Councillor Belton. <laughs> Councillor Cliff. Thank you very much. And may I um, echo what... Madam Mayor, may I, may I join everyone else and thank you for your exquisite chairing of the last year. Yeah. You owe me a prompt there, because I was just about to say exactly the same. Um, may I echo Councillor Belton's fine words there and say we will, we will miss you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you very much. Um, well, it was a very interesting debate. Not much about Wandsworth Town in the end. Uh, <laughs> neatly sidestepping from the uh, Southside Shopping Centre to the Greece uh, financial crisis and other, and other more weighty issues, perhaps, uh, in certainly in the Labour group's uh, view. Um, Councillor Cal Carpenter started the debate quite interestingly, offering us what I thought was a slightly confused wish list, if I may say so. And what I'd say to him is that it's not what you can rinse, Councillor, it's what you can deliver. And I think that's where we focus our, uh, our efforts, not on how much we can get out, but how much we can get out for um, delivery for Wandsworth. I mean, I should remind you that when, when Labour were in government, um, indeed affordable housing did drop to the lowest levels uh, since the 1920s despite presiding over an economic golden age, it would seem, um, some would say, um, to what today we are dealing with. Um, but you did make a number of points. You suggested that we lack a strategy um, and that we don't deliver. And also, I'm very much looking forward to your suggestion of where the uh, bus station might end up in the near future. Many great minds have been taxed by this, but have so far failed to come up with a solution. But we'll <laughs> perhaps maybe near your house, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, Councillor Tom eloquently talked about the, uh, the round brewery and the, um, the need to release the, uh, the gas holder constraints to deliver that development and indeed um, I think suggested and talked a bit about our strategy more generally for the area. And then Councillor Belton sidestepped all of that and started talking about Greece, which was fascinating. I think the point councillors make from our side about the, um, the Labour economic record is not so much that you cause the crisis, councillor, but you were caught with the trousers down. And that's the problem. <laughs> councillor Belton, this is my last meeting, please. Please, councillor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Councillor Cuff. So I, I want to address one or two of the, the, the points that were made in terms of our strategy and our approach. We, we look on the TV, and, and Councillor Belton alluded to it, huge problems with retail, huge problems with the economy, um, lots of concern. 
that we look at the difficulties that town centres have, they're described as outmoded, it's all about internet shopping, it's all about um, how the difficulty of some towns to shake off their industrial past and work and deliver and thrive in the modern age. And I think Wandsworth Town is genuinely doing that. Over the last few years, it's attracted up to £1 billion worth of investment um, to the town centre, and it's actually genuinely thriving as a, as a place. And I would say that there's a number of reasons why it's been able to do that, despite the trend, despite the issues, despite the difficult economic challenges that we face. And the first, I think, is the Council's overriding vision for the area. We want a place for the young and the old to use. We want something for shoppers. We want something for business. Uh, we want active street frontages, frontages. And we also want to sort out the gyratory system. It's part of our strategy. It's been part of our strategy for a long time. And to deliver that, We've set up a framework, we've set up a partnership in the town centre. And that strong partnership working permeates all the way up through our, our council, through our, our residence groups. And that focus, I think, provides us with the ability to help and support uh, investment. And I think it's also fair to say that political stability, which is what we have in this borough, helps a great deal too. It helps bring investment, it helps bring interest to people wanting to pop money into this borough. And that's been something which has made a big difference in Wandsworth. And so I think a couple of years from now, you walk up Garrett Lane and you'll see new shops, you'll, go, you'll see a new Sainsbury's, you'll see a new learning centre, you'll see new jobs, and you hopefully might not even see any gas works, but that's something that might be out of my control. But what I would say to you is that Wandsworth Town is an example of what can be achieved with political stability, with a bit of vision, and the ability to stick to a task. It's not about rinsing people, it's about focusing on what is achievable and deliverable. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Cuff. The motion now before the Council is to receive a paragraph two of the report number two in relation to Southside Shopping Centre. Is that agreed? Thank you.